Hello there and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Tracy Shilshi. Now it's International Women's Day today and let me start by wishing all our women viewers out there and my guests here in studio, lovely ladies joining me here, a very happy Women's Day. We have Madhu Kishwar, founder of Manushi Journal and Manushi Forum for Democratic Rights joining us here. Kaushal Panwar, who's the assistant professor at Delhi University joining us as well. And a senior Supreme Court lawyer, Reena Singh, also joining us in studio. And we also have senior journalist Sabah Nakfi, who's joining us from Meroli in the capital. And uh, we'll speak to all in just a short while. But just let's tell our viewers that today, of course, no surprise, everyone's talking about the importance of women, how each one of us deserves the right to equality, security, opportunity, also respect. But in 2017, are we still far from the right to equality? Or have we taken actual significant strides in social change? And also, are we leading the workplace in various fields? Let's start with Kishwar, ma'am, here. Ma'am, um, you know, you, of course, uh, are, you're one of the pioneers of women uh, change as far as social change is concerned. Uh, you know, do you feel uh, that, you know, in 2017, uh, we have seen significant strides as far as women's participation or, for that matter, opportunities go? Without doubt. I mean, my own lifetime, I've seen the situation change quite dramatically in some very good ways and in some very bad ways. Uh, all change is not always for the good. Mm -hmm. For example, I mean, uh, the good part is that women are coming out even from small towns and villages. Um, they come to study in faraway places like Delhi. Uh, look at the areas around Delhi University, JNU. You have young 18-year-olds whose parents are sending them to do an ordinary BA from remote Nagaland, Manipur, Orissa villages, mm -hmm. and wherever have you. This was just not conceivable when I was a student of Delhi University. So which means parents are taking risks, there's hunger for education, there's hunger for getting daughters, uh, explore new opportunities, even the job market has opened up, and IT especially mm -hmm. has uh, actually created a much greater level playing field because it's not brawn anymore, yes. but really brain that counts. Now, on the flip side, for example, um, the, the manner in which the sex industry, you know, uh, call girl rackets, women getting sucked into prostitution rackets, and I'm not talking about women who are in it uh, out of compulsion, out of poverty. I'm talking about young college students from middle and fairly, uh, uh, you know, well-off families doing it to earn quick bucks. To me, that's really worrisome. Mm -hmm. But the most worrisome part, if you ask me, uh, the good things, plenty. Yes. The negative, of course, the um, overall environment, you know, of unsafety, increasing criminalization of our society. But within it, I think women have been encouraged to develop a sense of victimhood. Now, forever breast beating. And I really think that if you approach the world as a victim mm -hmm. and you assume you'll be treated badly, you're more likely to do badly or to be not taken seriously. But if you can look at people, men especially, authority figures straight in the eye and be quietly assertive, be sure of your own skills. Now, to say that all women um, should be everywhere it doesn't work. Yeah. Because in, in India, given the enormous scarcity of high quality talent, I believe if women have talent, they're just unstoppable. Then the gender barrier doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's only when you don't have sufficient merit, yeah. but you want to be everywhere. That's really when the problem arises. So to me, one should avoid playing victim. Mm -hmm. You want your rightful due in the world. Make sure that you develop yourself, have confidence to look at people straight in the eye. But then do you feel that's also because, uh, you know, we are women who actually have supportive families and therefore it's easy for us to say uh, that, you know, um, you know, it's easy for us to conquer something. If you want to, if you want, if I want that job, I'll study for it and I can get it. But that also comes from the fact that we come from 
uh, you know, comparatively better economic, uh, uh, you know, family, families are also, you know, we're supported by our families. Uh, do you think that is also, I, I can see Without you nodding ahead. No, 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 let me, quickly, 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 ask it. Do you think it's easy to say that if a girl wants to do it, she can do anything. It feels good to say that, but actually, ground, in reality, what do you think? I think that there is a lot of work now. You can see that in the Dalit, in the past people, in our Adivasi people, आज भी भले ही वो कितने भी टैलेंटेड क्यों ना हो जो एक पैमाना है उनका जाति के नजरिए को देखने का या फिर जिस तरीके से सामंतवाद उनके साथ काम करता है अगर नो डाउट कि जब उनको मतलब एक बराबर की लाइन में खड़ा कर दिया जाता है तो वो टॉप पे भी जा सकती है लेकिन उनका सिर्फ टॉप पे जाना ही मतलब मायने नहीं रखता लेकिन उसके साथ साथ जो जो कास्ट फैक्टर जो काम करता है उनको पीछे धकेलने का ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण पहलू है जैसे मैं दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी में पढ़ाती हूँ हमारे यहाँ जो स्टूडेंट हर तरह का स्टूडेंट हमारे सामने आता है लेकिन जो स्टूडेंट ऐसी बैकग्राउंड से हो वहाँ मतलब स्टूडेंट्स का देखने का उनका नजरिया Even as being a teacher, I mean, our teachers also have to look at their side. It's a very clean and clean. We have to get the same thing, but now it's still a little bit. In the Dalitans, especially in the Adivasi Mahila, now if I look at the Jharkand and the remote area, where the Adivasi Belt is, they are also a little different from other people. Now, when the atrocity of the Kandamal in 2008, when we surveyed the Mahila, so many people are also keeping their mouth in their mouth. So, when we asked them, why are you so beautiful, why are you so big deal? So, they said that the जो वहाँ के जो सो काल प्रकाश जो है वो उठा ले जाते हैं लड़कियों को इसलिए ताकि वो लड़की सुंदर ना दिखे तो अपना एक अस्केप करने के लिए वो इस तरीके से करते हैं नो डाउट कि हमें समानता के अवसर उपलब्ध हुए हैं हमारा संविधान भी समानता के अवसर दे रहा है लेकिन जिस तरीके से व्यवहार में जो अभी भी अधूरा है मतलब हमारी जो क्या आपको लगता है कि जब आप स्कूल में थी और अब जो लड़कियां स्कूल में हैं क्या उसमें चेंज आया है थोड़ा सा उसमें क्या आपको लगता है कि अब फैमिलीज जो है इनकरेज करते हैं लड़कियों को पढ़ाई करने के लिए अभी करती हैं लेकिन आप ये देखिए कि अभी भी अगर आप बिल्कुल एकदम ग्रामीण प्रवेश में चले जाएं वहाँ आज भी अगर महिला लड़के और लड़की में से दोनों में से पढ़ाने की बात आती है तो लड़कों को ही पढ़ाया जाता है लड़की का फिर भी सेकेंडरी रहती है आज भी हरियाणा जैसी जगह पे या जो ऐसे जो क्षेत्र हैं वहाँ लड़कियों को पढ़ाना ज्ञान अर्जित करने के लिए नहीं पढ़ाया जाता बल्कि एक शादी की क्वालिफिकेशन की ग्रेजुएशन होगी तो अच्छा लड़का मिलेगा परिवार अच्छा मिलेगा ये एक जो एक जो माइंड बना हुआ है वो आज भी अभी भी कायम है एंड दैट्स नॉट एंड रीना दैट इज नॉट दी केस It's not just about the villages. It's not just about district levels. But you know, even on even if you talk about urban India, uh, you know the gender, the sex ratio, of course, is a completely different uh, topic altogether, and it it is quite worrisome. Even though we've seen uh, you know uh, some positive changes on that front, but even you know as a Supreme Court lawyer, you have just one woman judge out of the 24, and you know that of course says a lot about how much of a change we need to do. And it doesn't just it's not just limited to education. You may be qualified. But that opportunity to be at par with men, I mean, that's still very far it's away. It's very difficult because, see, uh, firstly, I'm not uh, agreeing with Madhuji because uh, we are sitting in a society and we are looking at the people we are approaching to the courts also. And I'm a, a mediator in the Supreme Court also. And I'm looking to people from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. Mm -hmm. The mindset, they have different, you know, I'm just uh, putting one example so that we, uh, that will be uh, very clear uh, in such a scenario. In Rajasthan, the girls are more educated than the boys. Hmm. So what uh, the Rajasthani people are doing, they are getting married their uh, daughters to the Andhra and in you know, a drought towards the south instead of the north. Because they feel the north people are more smarter than uh, the we Rajasthani people. So they are approaching to the down to AP. So you see, because I have observed by sitting as a mediator seat, the culture is different, language is different, yeah. and even the physique is also changed. So in that situation for a girl, only intellect doesn't work with the husband. He, okay, fine, the husband is working in IT and he's a very, uh, uh, you know, the handsome salary he's earning. Mm -hmm. So I'm also educated, so I'm compatible with her. No, the mental, you know, setup is entirely different because he's earning good, he's having good status, but he's not giving equal status to the wife yeah. who is equally educated. 
even the people are sitting in the California also, I'm, uh, I have done my mediation courses from there also. I have done a lot of work uh, in uh, California, San Francisco Belt. I observe the same mentality there also. Yes. Because the people have traveled 20, 25 years before. And they are carrying the, all that mindset, you know, the uh, uh, strong men is more stronger than the women and mm -hmm. the, you know. So I believe gender bias is there. And if you see all fields, you see in the politics, you will find a few women who are coming forward. Yeah. They are really very, very talented. But men are not ready to accept a woman as a powerful woman. Mm -hmm. Because yes, they are emotional, but they are justified also as compared to men. You see, we have a uh, uh, few lady leaders. You can find out uh, Madam Jalalita ji. Mm -hmm. She was there. You just see the state of Tamil Nadu. I can see the state is quite happy. You see the other state. It's a uh, Bengali uh, in Bengal. Yeah, Mamata also. Banerjee is Mamata there. Banerjee yes. is also we there. We also have Sushma Swaraj, who's yes. one of the top five performing yes. ministers. Yes, and she of this. is intellectual yes. woman. Yes. But see now, uh, we should not say much. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, evident absolutely. to see the places where, as uh, you rightly mentioned, yeah, the yeah. number of our women judges. Yes, everywhere mm -hmm. you see, because in high court there is a criteria for the elevation, and it's a pick and choose. There's no competition. There's no open uh, invitation for everybody. The ladies are very competent here. They are doing very good in judicial sides mm -hmm. in. Uh, uh, legal fields, but they're not coming up mm -hmm. because there's no support. Only those ladies are coming up. The basically their siblings or their father, the yeah, good yeah. family are sitting yeah. on the top. Yeah. So they are just uh, getting that pulling string. That's so right. That's I, right. So I, we're I talking really about yes, uh, yeah. Sabha. If I could come to you, less than 10% of high court judges are women. Uh, even in right. parliament, in fact, only 12% of members are women. We know how that reservation bill, of course, has been going on and on for years. Uh, India, of, of course, ranking very low as far as leadership roles are concerned. In fact, if you just talk about, uh, like Madhu, of course, mentioned, you know, in the IT sector is, you know, something that has uh, propelled India's uh, uh, women, really, as far as workforce is concerned, given them a lot more opportunities than we saw at least 10 years back. But even, uh, you know, as far as CEOs are concerned, we have only 17 of them. Uh, 17 female CEOs in the top 500 companies that are listed in India and that's quite a low number isn't it if you actually think about it in terms of where the men are and where women are uh, you know anything that you would like to reflect on these numbers do you also express uh, some sort of positivity like Madhu or do you think we still have a long way to go? You see, uh, we, are, we are a very extraordinary country, let me say that, because we have had the, we, we may have one of the greatest sort of women leaders who emerge. We have uh, Jaya Lalita, who's just been mentioned. We've had, uh, Maya, we have Mayavati in the game right now. We have Mamta Banerjee. We've had Indira Gandhi. I mean, the list goes on and on, okay? So we've had great political leaders who are women. Yet, we cannot deny that there is a structural, societal, uh, injustice that women face and it is there even in journalism. Let me elaborate on that. That uh, I have spoken to uh, reporters from the regional media, they get paid much. The young girls who are there, they get paid less than men very often in small, small papers. Forget the small papers, look at the English uh, dailies. Let me say that I worked also in a great liberal magazine for many years but when you get to the, when the cookie crumbles, fact is, it's now been years since I left Outlook magazine, I was getting paid towards the end, this is in the post Vinod Mehta era, mm -hmm. I was getting paid less than many men who were less known, less capable than me, but they just had got this job worked out with the management. And those are one of the issues on which I'm saying it now in your program. Those are one of the issues on which I kept on complaining. Yeah. Uh, when I was working with an extraordinary figure like Vinod, it did not matter because we all worked for him. After a while, there were men who were getting triple my salaries who were just there. I was getting paid less. Mm -hmm. So forget about me. I, I'm still in a position. Today, those men, nobody's asking them to write. No one's asking them for television because they were never of any great value in journalism. Yeah, Let yeah. me put it that way. Yeah. So uh, that, that's, I'm giving you an anecdotal story. So of course, there is a structural uh, injustice that women have to confront. And uh, across the media, and uh, 
it's there in our, in our personal laws and this for all religions and inheritance property but at the same time it's such a wonderful space to be in india also because i've just been traveling so much in up and the women take time to speak when you ask them questions but then they do come out and speak many of them have strong opinions in spite of all of this you know there is a great freedom which a woman like me enjoys i travel i do things so i don't see the plate as being all uh, the situation as being all bad yeah. yes but there are serious issues of uh, and of course i mean we are not even i'm not even going to enter the area of sexual violence and all of that i'm not absolutely. going there at all absolutely i'm just I talking mean, generally yes uh, in so. fact at the very beginning i did tell uh, you know the ones who are here the panelists we're going to try and stick to certain areas because we do know when it comes to women uh, apart from you know just as far as working is concerned so much of it is also layered with security and layered with uh, prejudices and all of that uh, but madhu uh, you know one and you know we have to reflect on that in in some way uh, as far as gender parity is concerned when it comes to salaries uh, this is of course a fight which is worldwide i mean india is not the only one who's of course fighting for it um, but you know uh, do you also feel that whatever salary we get we somehow have to justify it much more than men we somehow have to prove a caliber again and again and do you think that uh, you know it to some extent also discourages women from continuing in the workforce for longer maybe after you know after having two or three kids for example see it's not as if i personally have not experienced discrimination mm. even like she described her own experience at cs uh, at outlook uh, i was in a very left progressive outfit called center for the study of developing societies it claims to be the avant garde most institution and believe you me the 20 years i spent there were rife with discrimination bypassing me uh, studiously and promoting people i mean for example i qualified to be the director long years ago mm -hmm. and the people who were made and i was bypassed for 20 years my junior and didn't have a fraction of the experience uh, qualifications yeah. mm. uh, no i mean in comparison but the, i'm saying i still prefer not just for myself i'm saying we, if we want women to do well the first thing you have to do is not develop a sense of victimhood I faced discrimination. I faced uh, all forms of putting down because you're, you know, not my family. Luckily, yeah. my family treated me much better than any son anywhere in the world could mm -hmm. be treated. Mm -hmm. So that really gave me the confidence to build my uh, on, on my own whatever limited talents God gave me to 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 be able to explore them fully. The point that I'm trying to make is this. Yes, there are families where, I mean, you know, we worship Saraswati, the goddess of learning. At the same time, we don't send, send daughters um, to, school to school or don't invest equally. But the point that I'd like to make is this. As opportunities open, you see, even the poorest do start a wailing of them. Now, for example, if you are in a village, whether tribal, or backward village with a lot of scheduled castes and poor communities. There, whether you are a Brahmin or you are an OBC, it doesn't matter if your school doesn't function. If the Sarkari school that you have is abysmally ill-equipped, teachers don't teach, they don't come. So whether you are a Brahmin or you are an uh, uh, SC community person, you are put at a similar disadvantage. So this rural urban divide, the failure of the government to provide quality health care and educational services. If you ask me, this is the big challenge because there's no point looking at gender divide in say education yeah. or health if even men are doing very poorly. I feel sorry at the way so many, I mean about 50% yes. of children including boys, are malnourished, undernourished, they're retarded because they've been underfed. Now, are you going to only there look at gender divide or 
they are maleducated, they drop out of school, there's mm. lumpenization. Are you only going to talk of gender differential there? Or are you going to say, we must provide in every village a world-class school? We must have in every village a world-class health center, which takes care not just of primary yeah. and preventive health care. So, so the saying, moment you yeah. do that, it's much easier to bridge the divide. All right. But so only to saying, talk yeah. of women or you know just caste differentials yeah. i'm saying we're doing so poorly on so many indicators mm -hmm. to me that's really worrisome rather than having this zanana dabba mentality just think of women all the time but i'm saying why why bother about the zanana dabba when the train to which the zanana dabba is attached may be going towards the khad mm -hmm. may be going heading towards the death okay, so what you're saying is what i want to make sure that the train is headed uh, you know the prejudice in society aside if the government actually pays attention reena do you think if the government actually pays attention to uh, attention to school to healthcare yeah. that in a very very big way could contribute uh, to how girls eventually and boys, but girls as See, well. That is there. Yes. Right to Education Act is there. Yes, Til I, 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 yes, I think it's there. That there's a government is providing. Good. It's not the case that the government is not looking after all these issues. They are taking up all the issues mm -hmm. and for the betterment for the uh, male child and the female child. But uh, when we are talking about the gender bias, that's exactly she's right. That's a different part. But when we start the topic is this, whether the yes. ladies, are the women who are really working hard at, because they are married, they are working hard at their home also yeah. and their work area also, are they really victimized of the gender bias or not? Mm -hmm. So I really feel, yes, there's a gender bias because few departments are there. Even uh, uh, you must be aware about the matter. It was uh, before the Supreme Court. In fact, the, the, there was an army person, the, the lady officer, she fought to the right of equality, which is art, basically in the chapter 3 and article 14 to 80 of the constitution, it says right to equality. No government can say, uh, uh, deny on the fact that you are gender biased, you are a female, you are a weaker section. No, uh, But unfortunately, that doesn't, that doesn't happen, does it? I mean, everywhere you are seeing... Uh, that you know, uh, women are not being paid equally. Women are not being treated equally. No, I'm not saying that. Don't uh, overstate uh, the case. Uh, my request to you is just one second. Say. Just one second. So what? My because? point is, let us never overstate the case because there are a lot of fields uh, in which women are paid equally. It's mm -hmm. not as if everywhere okay. the okay. discrimination in, is. In, that's where in, 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 in few fields, in few fields, yes. in yeah. few fields the word was few fields. And in few fields, I was telling the main fields where were there. Yeah, yeah. I, fact, I, 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 I said everywhere. everywhere. I apologize for that. Not everywhere, but still it's in not most everywhere. In most in, of in, it. In, in, yes. in most area, because it, this is there. You know what they feel. In fact, uh, uh, I'm talking about the legal side also. Yeah, yeah. You see in the lower judiciary, yes, ladies are more. Mm -hmm. You see the percentage because it's an open competition. We are appearing before the exams. We are passing through mm -hmm. according to our acumen and the intelligence. Yeah. We are getting through. Through the written uh, you know, exams, exam yeah. but are where there is, a, where there is a pick and choose. I'm mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. about the pick and choose. Yeah. Patuji, let me complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm to, uh, and let me complete yes, my yes. submission. We're running short of time. You can Very say quickly. whatever yes, you yes. want to say thereafter. So uh, the thing is, basically, when there is a pick and choose, there is a man and a female. But I would like to add one more thing in this. Only men in the society is not responsible for the female who was not coming up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Basically, absolutely. Yeah. the people we suppose, I'm sitting on a higher post, I'm not bothered about my sisters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not pulling them up. In fact, if I have bad attires and to select, I'll see man is better because they can work hard, they can, uh, you know, give more time and whatever my biases. Mm -hmm. I will not pick the lady. Okay. So this is one very important issue. The one lady who is sitting on the top, yeah. not I'm running short of time. I have to just get last last words uh -huh. from you. Yeah, you what do you think? I think that my father told me that today I will go to the school of the school. If it is true that the government gives all the opportunities, it gives all the opportunities. If it is disadvantaged, it will get all the opportunities. But you can also see that the government gives all the opportunities to the lower caste, the female or the girls, they are sent back. Even the professors who are studying in the university, 
आप पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी में आप जंपर ले लीजिए वो प्रोफेसर की सीट पे जिस सीट पे वो बैठते हैं जो जिसमें क्लास लेते हैं उनको चेयर तक नहीं दी जाती और अगर चेयर दी जाती है तो उसको धोला धुआ जाता है अभी अगर आप रिसेंटली इसलिए भी नहीं है कि यू नो दैट यू आर अ वुमेन या Uh, you know what's the hope? Maybe by next year, when we're discussing International Women's Day again, what do you see changing? Do you, you uh, do you see any positive change as far as you know uh, work is concerned, as far as education is concerned? Yeah, I I do actually. You know, from the time that I grew up, and now I have a, a daughter whose board exams begin tomorrow. I do see a lot of change, and then I look at my own mother. We're all from a very educated, liberal background. But I do see a change uh, generationally in the level of rights as a woman that, uh, you know, even I did not have that kind of awareness that my daughter has, that this is sexist, this is wrong, this is, uh, you know, role playing by women. And she's a very easy going child. She's not at all uh, some, and all her friends, you know, they, they all have a greater awareness. Mm -hmm. So certainly there's, there's been a lot of change in, the, in that sort of uh, orientation. And, yes. and I basically feel positive about many many things that happened even though many bad things are there yes. especially the structural sort of uh, you know fact that in the judiciary there are such few women overall i still feel very positive because india is packed with articulate bright brilliant women who do also get heard mm -hmm. you know so that's what i'd like to say on this day Absolutely, absolutely. So as far as right to equality is concerned, still a far way to go, still a lot of fight that we, you know, women still have to do. For that matter, men as well helping us along the way you know, for that right to equality. But as far as social change is concerned, we have seen quite a significant change in the past few years and we are hoping, of course, uh, this improves uh, leaps and bounds. Thank you so much to all of you for joining me here. Sabha as well, thank you for joining me on this debate. Uh, we'll be back with the big picture tomorrow on another topic, but that's it for the moment. Thank you.